Testing, testing, testing. Jamie here, Jamie here. March 26th, 2024. Just getting on just for a couple minutes. I always say that and then it turns into 20 minutes, but just going to talk really quick. Uh, VKTX, they had the, finally had that oral data this morning. A CDOX, a convertible note offering, $150 million, and somehow the stock just tumbled. I'll talk about that. CGC recouped, well, it had recouped all its, well, most of its losses from yesterday. It's fading a little bit here, but still holding ground there. I'll talk a little bit about Dell, uh, Innovative uh, Industrial Properties, which is a REIT. Added some calls finally on that one, and uh, go from there. But first, uh, yeah, I'll talk about CDOX. So great move yesterday. I think it was up 27% um, on no news yesterday. Uh, just rallied. Uh, you know, I thought, and based on the volume that uh, Clifford Sozin was adding more shares, he had already added uh, nearly $14 million worth the previous week. Maybe he has. Maybe there'll be some Form 4s after the close today. But... Close at highs, gapping higher in the morning, and all of a sudden, about 7.15 in the morning, they announced a $150 convertible note. A uh, This is on the heels of their $50 million uh, offering last week, which resulted in nearly over 2 million shares of dilution to shareholders. Uh, <clears throat> just remarkable to me, like if you're the CFO, and I'm not a CFO, <laughs> but if you were the CFO, you would think there's a that you, you would have planning, right? So... And I'm not saying they haven't planned for this. Obviously, they, they want to move the notes. They want to kick the can down the road so the new convertibles, uh, 2029, where their note they issued in 2020 was due September 2025. So they, they need to, to to pay off what's left on that and, and go out further. But you just raised $50 million. Why not just wait and do it all together? So it kind of doesn't make sense. And I think when you do things that don't make sense, it uh, induces a little bit of concern with shareholders. So I think that's some of the selling. Also, there was some odd wording. Uh, they pretty much said that the uh, that folks who had the note from 2020, they had some hedges on. So when they did the initial 2025 note, it was a $200 million convertible note. And it had a conversion price of 85 bucks. At the time, the stock was in the 60s. So you have folks who probably were thinking, and that and CDLX went up to 170 bucks. So at times the conversion price was way above where uh, where it was converting, which is great. But then the stock went all the way down to eight bucks. So you have to think some of these folks who had the notes would have some kind of hedge on some kind of mechanism to make to protect their their investment. So you have some wording in the uh, announcement today that that pretty much implies is there's going to be some kind of short squeeze that's going to prop up the share price based on folks unwinding some derivatives or uh, things like that. So maybe that's yet to be seen. I don't know. Maybe they had it uh, completely wrong and it caused selling. I mean, see, it tumbled down all the way to 12 bucks. And to put it in perspective, it was an $8 stock two weeks ago. So, um, but that was before Amex, the Amex deal, and before the, the earnings finally showing, uh, you know, a return to growth. So, We'll have to see how things play out. Uh, lucky, well, I wouldn't call it lucky, but you do this long enough, you, you're up quite a bit, even though despite the fact I think it was going to 30 bucks and, and higher, I locked a lot of my, most of my 20s in and some of the 20 to 250s. So I was riding some nice profits already, but unfortunately I missed out on more if I had closed all my posi entire position yesterday. But it is what it is. I still think it's going to get back up, up to 20 bucks before April expiration. Still plenty of time. So I'll continue to hold the 20s and 2250s and i just add some 1750s it's a great story so um i'm not sure you would think they would do some kind of conference call i don't know to maybe help explain things and again i think there's going to be some kind of filing again from clifford sozen he's probably going to continue to add he's probably ticked off at this sees it down here if he was buying at 13 14 he's he's probably buying at 12 bucks it's probably the bottom right there so that's cdlx not much else to add here but it just goes to show some of these names you can be Right, convicted, have the fundamental analysis down, the due diligence, and then all it takes is one little event like that just to, to, to kill to kill a run, kill momentum. They could have waited. The stock could have been thirty bucks next week. So, all right. So that's CDLX. Um, now talk about Viking. So Viking had their oral data this morning. I thought it was great. It's a very small cohort. I, I don't know if it was hundred people. I have to go look at the data again. <clears throat> but they have different different dosage. Only a phase one phase one study. Only four weeks, 28 days. NVO did their oral data. It was 12 weeks. But with that, um, 
they had a mean weight loss of 3.3%, which was above their expectations. And then over 57% of the cohort lost over five pounds, lost at least five pounds, uh, five, five percent, excuse me. That's huge. And I'm not saying you take the four week study and multiply it by three to get 12 weeks and say, wow, they would have lost, you know, 15%. But I mean, you start looking at, I mean, it's very strong data and it's clean, meaning no adverse effects. Some of these headlines you've seen, I talked about yesterday the, on the rant and last couple of weeks, it seems every weekend there's new headlines around these GLP-1 drugs, the class action suits, things like that based on you know, people losing organs, going to the hospital with abdominal pain, uh, all these things. So to see a clean, um, clean data from VKTX, it just it just bodes well, I think, for for a buyout. So now they have their great data, uh, you know, a couple of weeks ago, and then you have this oral data, which just kind of just re reaffirms the bullish stance. And they still have Nash; it's like in their back pocket. So you saw what happened with MDGL, and I didn't even look what MDGL is right now. Actually, let me put VKTX on the chart. Uh, well, it's down here at 245. I think there's still some concerns that these GLP-1 drugs are going to be a solution for NASH, and MDGL is not going to have a market, but uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think it's a big enough market for everybody. Uh, you also take a look at the chart at VKTX. It almost looks like you, you, you almost have a potential bull flag here. So it was, at the, it was in the 30s, uh, and then it went all the way up to 100. So then you divide those. I mean, how I've always done bull flags, you divide the, the moves in half. So... 70 is the difference between, well, it's 35. Let's say it's $65 is the difference between 35 and 100. So you're talking a $32.50 move from where we are. So if you look where it, uh, I mean, we close at 70. So at least 100, 150 would be the next target in, in the coming day or two. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. I was going to add more strikes, but I still have my April call. So I'll hold on to those. There's still that possibility there was going to be M&A. I think if anything, we have a long weekend. I wouldn't be surprised there's going to be some M&A at some point. So love the VKTX story. Um, you know, and I, I put this on Fintwit and I posted in the chat room too that NVO, which they didn't even publish their adverse effects when they did the data. So that's kind of a red flag by its, in itself where VKTX pretty much 100% transparent with, that, with the phase one study. But they gained $30 billion in market cap on that uh, phase one data. And on the flip side... VKTX lost 20% in market cap because of the positive oral data. So you would think not only should VKTX recoup that 20%, then it should, you know, it's a $7 billion company. MVO gained $30 billion on positive oral data. I'm not saying that VKTX should be $30 billion right now. I just think it should be much higher than where it is. So that's kind of the thought process there on VKTX. Um, let's see what else. Oh, oh so CGC. Disappointing yesterday. So it was gapping over nine bucks at four, five, six a.m. Gave all that back, opened flat, and then just melted for the rest of the day in the sixes. It was actually at five seventy this morning, and then just ramped, and uh, you know it's still up sixteen percent. Um, I locked some more of my my ten dollar strikes in. My eight dollar strikes were ten bags if I had still held them, but just CDLX is a great example. You got to take profits when you can take profits, because when things move, especially some of these volatile small cap names. Uh, they can they can swing against you. Next thing you know, your profits are gone. But also, I went and added some May strikes. I think that CGC is going to trade into the teens in the coming coming weeks, uh, 15, 16, 17 bucks, if not higher. Um, yeah, I just think the, the cannabis is going to get back into the limelight. It's already starting to do that. Um, so I'll continue to look for opportunities to trade that. But I'll probably just hold the, the last of my tens. And then hold the May strikes and, and go from there and be a little patient because it's going to be bumpy. I put it on the watch list yesterday when I, when I wrote about CGC. It's going to be a bumpy ride. So you can see it's, it's, it's already volatile. So, you know, we could be up 20% today. It could be back in the sixes tomorrow. Or it could be, it could be over 10 bucks. Uh, obviously, I hope the latter, but we'll have to see how that goes. And then that brings in IIPR. IIPR was one of my favorite uh, names a couple of years ago. I think it was one of my back half stocks for like 20 19 or something like that. Just a great REIT story. The folks who lead this uh, this this REIT already sold out a REIT uh, before for billions of dollars. And then they created this one. It's the only pure play in the cannabis space for cannabis real estate. Just a, just a great story. Um, I'm surprised it hasn't really ran up as much with some of these other cannabis names because you think 
as names like Tilray, CGC, ACB, all these names run up, gonna, that means that there's more money out there. More money means more facilities, more, you know, all these things. So uh, you would think it would just bode well. But the 110s look interesting on risk reward basis. Plenty of time on those. And I may look to get some May strikes. Um, you know, what is up up at the upper Bollinger Band? Upper Bollinger Band is 103.31. But I think with the the current market going on with the cannabis side, I think some of these can overshoot. So uh, we'll have to see how that one plays out. But I really like that one for upside, especially in the coming weeks. And then uh, Dell. So <laughs> finally added Dell calls. I was trading Dell when it was like 60 bucks. Then it had that, and you know, I wouldn't say shame on me, but I feel kicking myself for missing the earnings because Dell, I wouldn't call it uh, SMCI, but it's it's similar. I mean, they have they, they sell the hardware side of things and they, they cater, especially with AI, the AI boom, they, they cater to that. So they're going to continue to see upside in, in regards to revenue, um, some growth. It only trades one times revenues. And, you know, they just announced this morning they're cutting back on some staffing, or at least they disclosed headcount reductions. And, uh, you know, after its earnings, it, it tapped 131. So I think that, uh, you know, in the coming weeks, it's going to at least trade back over 131, if not higher. I was looking for the April 130s. I think they were 90. Let's see, are they still 90 by a dollar? I may look to get those before the end of the day if uh, if, if Dell finds its way back above like one, one maybe back to highs. Um, my 120s are back, almost cut in half. Let's see, the 140s, are they? I don't know. I mean the 130s, the 80 by 85. So those look like decent risk reward. Well, I'll have to see if it gets some footing. I don't want to. I don't want to chase after it, especially if some, you know, the, the space starts to sell off. Dell's going to fall with it, but I think it offers some a decent uh, play in sympathy with some of the other names because I think, again, it's going to come up and tap that that earnings high, and it's kind of under the radar. It really hasn't moved as much as some of these other names in the space. Really, this this reaction. I mean, it was fifty five bucks in September, but it really hasn't done much until until the start of March when it had its earnings. So that's Dell. IIPR, CGC, um, I'm trying to think of some other, you know, so holiday shortened weeks, so don't forget markets closed on Friday, and, you know, take a look at the, the SPY, and yesterday it traded at a tenth of, two tenths of a percent range, which is remarkable, and then you like look at today, and today's candle is even smaller than yesterday's candle, we opened at 5, 521.23, the low of the day is 520.65, so we can do the quick math here, and five, the high is 521.58, and the low is 520.65. And then what do we open at? We open at five, 521.23, right? So we're, we're even less trading range than, than, than yesterday, 0.17. <laughs> Tenths of a percent, uh, hundreds of a percent. What point one seven percent move today? That's the that's the trading range on the spy. That's insane. And uh, yeah, so I mean that's kind of good because there there's not much in the way of catalyst this week. So you think if there's an opportunity for the for the bears to come in and take profits ahead of these huge runs, or 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 at least pressure and short, this would be it. So the the fact the market's hanging here is a good sign. I always bring up this story, and I, I gotta find. I used to I did a post. It was I think it was back in two thousand fourteen in the summer. There was a there was a 30 minute period on the spy where it traded in a 100th of percent range. So the spy back in 2014 maybe was let's say 200. Let's see, I'd have to go find the, the post because you'd be shocked because the volatility is a little different nowadays. Yeah, it was in the 100. So we were maybe it was 164.73 and it changed traded between 164.73 and 164.74 for like 30 minutes and had a screenshot of the actual candles. It was it was pretty remarkable. That, that's uh, that's probably never going to happen again because obviously we're much higher. So to hold that kind of range is uh, substantial, but still just remarkable. That that will be the the peak of low volatility. But similar, I mean, 2014 was a great year, and when you have vol low volatility like that, that typically means we're probably headed for more highs once we churn through this. So we'll have to see how this all plays out. I think that's it. I'll try and get on after the close. I'll hit near the close if anything else changes. Some of the other names I was looking at Spotify, right? So Spotify has been on the watch list, and sure enough, it was added to the Bank of America uh, um, top list, and they removed uh, Netflix. The stock went all the way up to two seventy eight this morning. I was kicking myself, and then it just reversed fourteen dollars from the highs. So it's 
only up uh, barely a percent now. I'll continue to watch that one. I think it heads over 290 in the coming weeks. Uh, PayPal, all the way up to 68 bucks. Now it's down here at 66.77. Hopefully it just holds the gains. That'll make two days in a row, recoup most of uh, last Thursday and Friday's losses. That would be great. Did I talk about DWAC yet? I probably didn't, right? Um, yeah, so, you know, I've talked about DWAC, and well, now it's, it's Trump Media and Technology, DJT. But uh, I've talked about this one for quite some time uh, over the last couple of weeks because it's, you know, uh, this is nothing political, not right, left, center, not independent, whatever. It's just, to me, it's just a proxy of if you're a, a Trump supporter or you are uh, on the right, you're probably going to use this as a vehicle, as like almost like a vote, right? Um, it's a proxy. Same with Rumble, R-U-M. So take fundamentals aside, all that, all that fun stuff, and it's almost like it's a vote. So I, you know, added some of those speculative calls yesterday. I thought there'd be some FOMO into the, the ticker change. Sure enough, all the way up to almost eighty bucks, right out, right out the open. I looked at the premiums. I'm like, oh, maybe they're gonna open my my hundred strikes and open at four bucks. They were ten bucks. And then when I put it in, the tens got cleared and it was like nine by twelve. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, this is gonna go higher. So I'll continue to hold the, the, those Aprils because this could be a name that's gonna, that might get FOMO. And next thing you know, it's 100, 150, 200. I don't want to sound crazy, and I'm not gonna, you know, hold hold for that outcome. It could just as easily go down to forty bucks or thirty bucks. It could be down fifty percent tomorrow, because there's no underlying fundamentals really supporting the stock. But all you'll read and all the headlines will be these folks, and typically they'll be on the left side, saying, "Oh, it's overvalued. This is garbage." You know, uh, uh, Truth Social doesn't derive that much revenues at all. They have small members and whatever. But to me, the stock is not. It's not really attached to those fundamentals right now to me it's just attached to being a proxy so that's how i'm trading it and i'll continue to trade it it's not you know someone posted on responded my 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 tweet on twitter that that the the company should be in jail or something to that i'm like I, I, that's not up to me to decide right wrong left i'm not a judge i'm not the court of a you know um that's not me i'm just here to trade and i if i can make a bull case on the stock that i'm pretty confident i might as well especially on a name that could be extremely volatile. So it's not, this is a name that's not gonna move one, 2%. You know, it could be up another 25% tomorrow. On the flip side, it could be down another 25% now. But at least I'm I'm holding freebies now with some profits I can ride stress-free. But I, I look at them and say, but this could probably, this could gap again tomorrow. And then once it really gets FOMO, it could, you know, it, it did it back when it had uh, first gotten, when it was first announced that it was gonna be this reversed into this SPAC I mean, what was it, twelve dollars? I remember Asphalt Cowboy. He's not in the audio. Oh, is he on the audio? Yeah, he was talking. Him. He was. He's like, oh, should I get some calls on this? And it was like twelve or eleven bucks. And then he sold them when it went to like fourteen bucks or twenty bucks. And then two days later, it's one hundred and seventy dollars in the pre market. So, you know, those those don't happen very often. So to hold calls, hoping for that outcome, you, you're probably crazy. But sometimes you got to be a little crazy to to make those. To, the massive multi-bagger. Sorry, Asphalt Cowboy. <laughs> I'm trying not to mention it. Uh, so that's about it, folks. Uh, I'll try and get on if anything else changes. Let's hopefully we have a solid end to the end of the day. CDLX can get into the 15s or so. VKTX would be nice to see it like 90, 91 into the close would be great. PayPal's back over 67. Maybe Dell can get some footing here. Um, yeah, and that's it, folks. Let's have a great day. Rock and roll.